Hi, I'm Brian O'Neill, and this tutorial is about the so-called SSP-RCP scenario framework. And my goal in this talk is to tell you what are the SSPs, what are the RCPs, and how does one use them together to do scenario-based research. I'm going to try to do this mainly in simple terms without slides, just tell you what these things are and, and how you use them. So why don't I exit out of this? And uh, we'll just talk. Um, I hope that this will give you the general sense of what the framework is. Uh, it's easy to lose sight of the big picture and what the point of all the different components of the scenario framework are. Um, but it's really pretty straightforward uh, at its core. So let's start with that. And then a little bit later, I will use just a few slides to fill in a few details. So the story starts with a research community, our research community, that wants to carry out studies of what kind of challenges climate change is going to present to the world and what kind of response options might be best to deal with those challenges. The answers to those questions we, we already know depend really importantly on at least two things, how much and what kind of climate change might there be in the future and what will society be like? If there's a lot of climate change, challenges and solutions will be tougher. And of course, the opposite will be true if there isn't much climate change. Similarly, if society is relatively vulnerable and doesn't have a lot of capacity to deal with the issue, challenges and solutions will also be tough. And the opposite will be true if it turns out the society is relatively resilient and, and does have a lot of capacity to cope with the issue. So to answer the important questions about climate change, what are the risks? What can we do about it? We need to know something about the future of climate and the future of society. And that's where the SSPs, RCPs, and scenario framework come in. So let's start with the SSPs. Um, SSPs stand for shared socioeconomic pathways, and they are descriptions of how society may evolve in the future over the rest of the century at a very broad level. They tell stories with words, but also with numbers about the global future of society. And those stories envision what might happen to different aspects uh, of the world, population, economic growth, inequality, technology, governance, other factors as well. And these stories are grounded in scholarship and what we know from the social sciences about the outlook for these factors and how they relate to each other. There are five of these SSPs because the future is fundamentally uncertain. So we want to cover a range of, of possibilities. Now, importantly, um, the SSPs describe worlds in which climate change doesn't exist. There are no climate impacts. There is no climate policy. And you're probably thinking, wow, that doesn't sound like a very good idea because climate is going to change and it is going to affect society. It already is today. We're going to have climate policy. We have some of it already. And all of that's true, um, but that's okay. Just hang on a minute because SSPs are only half of the story. So now let's talk about RCPs. RCPs stand for representative concentration pathways. And they are descriptions of how climate may evolve in the future over the rest of this century. And you know, they're stories of a kind, but usually told in terms of quantitative projections of future atmospheric concentrations of greenhouse gases and the climate changes uh, they would cause. There were originally four of them, and now there are going to be eight uh, because, again, the future is uncertain. And so we want to cover a range of possibilities. So SSPs tell the story of future societal change without climate and RCPs tell the story about future climate without society. And the scenario framework is what helps uh, researchers put these two pieces of the story together uh, to get what we're really after, which is integrated analyses of risks and responses. Um, now, notice that I said that the framework helps 
researchers put the story together. And I emphasize that because the framework itself does not provide the answers the research community is seeking. That is, they do not provide how will society and climate co-evolve in the future. Instead, it provides the pieces to the puzzle so that we, as the research community, can do the integration ourselves. You take a climate projection based on an RCP, you take an SSP telling you what society might look like in the future without climate change, and you do an analysis that draws on both. So as an example, one kind of uh, analysis could be an impact analysis. You could ask, what if the society described by a particular SSP experienced the climate described by a particular RCP? What would happen? Um, that is, what would the climate change impacts on society be? The RCP gives you the climate information. The SSP tells you, you know, if there weren't climate change, how many people uh, are there and where would they be living and what their incomes would be, how educated and healthy, how well institutions work, et cetera. All the kind of information you would need in an impact assessment. Um, now, importantly, climate change would change for example, where people live, and it would change their incomes, their health, maybe the price of their food, other factors as well. So societal conditions will change away from what they are in the SSP as a consequence of the effect of climate. It's a consequence of the integration of these two factors. Um, and that is a result of your analysis, right? That is the impact study. How does climate impact society, which you write up and send to a journal? Um, of course, you could also do a mitigation analysis. You might ask, how could a society described by a particular SSP limit the amount of climate change it experiences to the amount described in a particular RCP? Um, an SSP by itself, which remember has no mitigation policy, is likely to generally produce a substantial amount of climate change. So to produce a lower climate future, mitigation would have to take place. And the same thing would occur as in our last example. The mitigation activities would change the nature of society described in the original SSP. The energy system, for example, would likely be quite different. Probably land use would be different as well. Maybe incomes, since you have to pay for the mitigation. And again, that's the result of your analysis. What's the cost of mitigation? Um, what low carbon energy options would be necessary to achieve a, a given climate goal. Again, those results, another paper to submit to a journal or, or to read about in a journal. So that's the basic idea of what SSPs are, RCPs are, and what the scenario framework is. Um, so now I wanna use just a, a few slides to fill in some details, which I hope will make more sense now um, than they otherwise would have. So I will, share my screen here. And I want to start with um, what the SSPs actually consist of. As we, as we talked about, uh, they have both a qualitative story uh, and some quantitative elements. And this qualitative story is a few pages of text describing how societal change is unfolding over time and why, what's the logic to this particular world and what's occurring in it. And it also includes quantitative elements at the country level. So for all countries of the world, each SSP provides population outcomes, educational composition of the population, urbanization uh, pathways, and GDP growth uh, over time. These are all quantified, projected, consistent with the qualitative story in that SSP. I'm listing here as well the five titles of the SSPs to give a sense of what each of these stories, what each of these SSPs is about. What is the logic uh, behind them? I won't go into the details uh, for any particular one, just uh, given time constraints. I do want to say, though, um, a word about why these five. How do we decide? when we've got a set of scenarios that are sufficient um, for our purposes. 
Well, as, as we sketched out before, a key part of the framework is to be able to investigate sensitivity or uncertainty in risks and responses to climate change, particularly adaptation and mitigation. So we wanted societal futures that would produce a range of results in terms of how hard it would be to mitigate or to adapt to any particular climate level. So we defined this space of future conditions we wanted to span futures that were easier or harder to adapt along the x-axis here, and those in which it was easier or harder to mitigate along the y-axis. So these five SSPs span the various combinations of these features. In SSP3, in the top right, societal conditions are unfavorable to both mitigation and adaptation, whereas in SSP1, and in the lower left, they're favorable for both. In SSPs 4 and 5, those conditions are mixed, and in SSP2, uh, conditions are in the middle, uh, moderate in both respects. So how about RCPs? Well, these are a selection of concentration pathways that span the range of all the scenarios, concentration projections in the literature. Uh, originally, there were four of them shown here, uh, plotted as radiative forcing, which is a measure that integrates across Con uh, all concentrations of all, all gases combined. Uh, and these concentration pathways were run through climate models in the CMIP project, the coupled model intercomparison project. Um, they produce a, a, a wide variety of climate outcomes. I'm showing here just the global average temperature uh, outcomes for each of the four um, RCPs. These have been available for quite some time and have been used in, in lots of studies already. Uh, in addition, uh, new versions have been developed where the concentration pathways were actually generated by the new SSP-based uh, emission scenarios. And four of these are updates of previous versions we just looked at, four are new. And a new set of climate model projections are now available, uh, which have been published in a, in a recent paper. Finally, there's um, a, a useful way of visualizing how uh, one can bring together these societal and climate futures. We have several of each. So one way to visualize these combinations is as a simple matrix. Um, so along the top, uh, of this matrix, you have the five different SSPs. Along the side, you have the eight different RCPs um, with four of them corresponding to the original versions uh, as well. The cells in this matrix represent the combinations of SSPs and RCPs uh, that you could combine in an analysis you, you might wanna do. So each cell you can think of as representing a particular combination of an RCP and an SSP. So for example, in the, the one I'm highlighting here, um, this particular combination of SSP2 and RCP4.5 might be used in analysis of what a world that had societal conditions that evolved according to SSP2 might look like when exposed to a climate uh, in RCP 4.5. Um, or it could be studies of how an SSP2 world would undertake the mitigation necessary to limit warming to RCP 4.5. Um, and so on, you can imagine examples like this for any particular cell. Um, now, as it turns out, not all of the cells appear to be feasible combinations. Some SSPs would not generate high enough emissions to match the radiative forcing in the higher RCPs. And in some SSPs, it would be too difficult to mitigate aggressively enough to reach the lowest levels. The challenges to mitigation would be too high. But that still leaves plenty of combinations of societal and climate conditions to investigate. So those are the basics of the SSPs, RCPs, and the scenario framework that is intended to help you and all of us uh, bring them together to do integrated work on the climate change challenge. Thanks for listening.